in biology, we need to take small things and make them into bigger things. To do this, we take small pieces of molecules and we build them into macromolecules. Now, macro meaning big, connected to molecule, meaning that these are big molecules. The macromolecules are the things that pretty much all of biology is made out of, and there are four of them that we care about. There are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. I'm going to begin with carbohydrates. You're probably familiar with carbohydrates. Most people like to eat them in the form of, for example, breads, pastas, potatoes, and sugars. In fact, sugar is the smallest unit of a carbohydrate. When you take sugars and you put them together, you get long strings of sugars that make starches and other carbohydrates. Sugars all have a fairly similar structure in which they are made of circles or hexagons of carbons with a bunch of hydroxyl groups, OHs, sticking out off of them. Now because of this structure, you can tell a couple of things about the carbohydrates. They all contain carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, which is very important, and because they have so many OHs, which are polar bonds, they are considered to be polar macromolecules. Pretty much all carbohydrates are polar, as in they are hydrophilic or they mix into water well. Carbohydrates are important to biology, mainly as an energy source. We use carbohydrates for eating, we break them down and we turn them into energy, and that is the biggest thing that carbohydrates are for. The next, the next macromolecule that we're going to talk about is lipids. Lipid is a fancy word for fat. So you're awfully familiar with fats. You probably have some butter or oils at home or have seen things made out of wax. Those are all lipids. Now, lipids structure is a little bit simpler than that of carbohydrates. Often it's just strings of carbon and hydrogen. Maybe they're bent, maybe they're not, but either way, lipids contain really only carbon and hydrogen. And because of that, they are nonpolar. So nonpolar means they do not mix into water, which makes sense if you think about your butter and your oils. The small pieces that are put together to make up lipids are called fatty acids. Each of these strings of carbon would be a fatty acid, and if you get enough of them together, then you can get a larger lipid, like, for example, a triglyceride, which is three fatty acids put together. You may also see lipids in the form of hexagons or pentagons connected to each other, for example, in a structure that would be similar to cholesterol. So what do you use lipids for? Well, lipids are still useful for energy, in fact, most of the time they are used as stored energy. But because of their nonpolar structure, they have another important job. And that is in building biological things. They create the structure that holds us together. We, as biological organisms, are mostly made out of water. And the reason that we are not puddles on the floor is because we have nonpolar membranes holding us together. And lipids help to create these nonpolar membranes. Nucleic acids are typically the most specific of the macromolecules. There are two kinds of nucleic acids that you're probably familiar with. DNA, de deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA, ribonucleic acid both of which are important in the human body. A basic structure of a nucleic acid has a sugar. So here is my sugar. It is attached to a nitrogenous base, meaning it contains nitrogen. And it is attached to a 
phosphate. So there's a group containing phosphorus. This small structure connects to many, many more structures like it, and it is called a nucleotide. As you can see from this sketch, nucleic acids contain a number of elements. It contains carbon and hydrogen, like both the carbohydrates and the lipids. You can see that it contains oxygen, also nitrogen, and in this case, phosphorus, which is specific to nucleic acids. Because of the structures and because of the OHs and specifically the phosphorus connected to the oxygens, nucleic acids are pretty much always polar. They always mix into water. Now what are they used for? Well, if you think of DNA and RNA, what they're most important for is cellular information. The information in a cell comes from the DNA or is transferred through the RNA, so they are always used for information. Finally, we have proteins. Proteins are probably one of the most interesting macromolecules because of their variability. Proteins are made up of small units known as amino acids. The amino acids have an amine group on one side, which is an N with two H's. Then it is connected to a carbon. And then it is connected to a carboxylic acid on the other side, which is a C, double bonded to an oxygen, and then also bonded to an OH. From the middle carbon between the two, there is an area in which many different groups can be attached. In fact, there are 20 different kinds of amino acids. Now, if you look just at the structure of the amino acid, you can see it has carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, similar to the nucleic acid. And sometimes in that side group, it can also contain sulfur, which you might recognize from the smell of rotting eggs, that's because the proteins in the eggs contain sulfur, and that's what you smell. Now, when you just look at this structure, with all of its oxygens and nitrogen, you might think that this would normally be very polar. And that can be true, especially if the R group, the extra piece sticking off of it, also has polar, polar bonds within it. However, if you were to take something like a long chain of just carbons and hydrogens and stick it off of the end of this small amino acid, you can easily get structures that are nonpolar. And so proteins can be both polar and nonpolar, and in some cases at the same time. Now, what makes proteins interesting is how versatile they are. So we said that carbohydrates and lipids are for energy, lipids help with structure, nucleic acids help with information. But there's still a ton of stuff in biology that needs to be done. There are reactions that need to be run. There's things that need to be built. There's movement that needs to be had. All of that is done by proteins because they can adjust, they can change, and they can take on every shape. Because of that, we say that proteins do just about everything. You can even use them for energy, although I wouldn't. They're not the best source. They do help a little bit with information, but not as much as the DNA. And they are involved in structure. They help to build the external surfaces of things as well as the internal pieces. So now you've seen all four macromolecules. You know what small pieces make them up, what elements they have, and what jobs they do.